Hey, you're with Easy Jeezy. It's a uh, weekday morning about 7.30. Got the uh, suspension adjusted. Back at the power line. Got the softened up suspension. Okay, so let's look at the uh, suspension. What I did, they have these little rubber stops, and I put them in the down, or I pushed them all the way up. So you can see how much of the shock I'm using on the front. Little tattletales. And this side doesn't look like it moved as far. Of course, there's a fat guy sitting on that other side of the car. That looks like we're about half of the suspension. Ah, this one looks like it went a little further. Besides where the fat guy was. The fat old man. Alright. And that's with both shocks. That's interesting. It didn't feel like it was moving that far, but at least it showed you the suspension is moving. The way the last guy had it set up, it was wound up so tight with the torsion bar, it, it wasn't hardly moving at all. And uh, as you can see, I moved the exhaust around. I think I know why he had that on there backwards. It was because the uh, this piping here was getting warm, and you can see there was a little bit of carbon track. So I just lifted it up and turned it, no big deal. Uh, it just barely fits in the trailer. I don't know if you can hear this. Uh, what else have I done since uh, Memorial Weekend and my torsion bar set up? I took all the uh, the fan shroud, lifted the alternator, it took all the tin off, and uh, the tops of the cylinders were just covered with mud and little stones and things like that that he had gotten in the in the desert situation and uh, some of that I may have blown up from the bottom at the car wash because I had taken it to the car wash about three times trying to clean all that junk off and so uh, got that if it's an air-cooled engine you gotta have the air get to where it needs to cool uh, this isn't really a dirt air cleaner setup uh, I have them ordered I've been waiting for a response from them I was hoping they'd be here by now they had a Memorial Day sale at CB Performance and I got a uh, outerwear as well as a uni foam that I would put over this. Those would be dry. This would be the oiled. And uh, this guy had a breather box. See this? This is, you may have noticed if you're one of my regular viewers. That's a change. This is off my old buggy. Uh, he had a breather box. And it was mounted right here to these two screws, right above the fan, and it was a leaky son of a gun. If you got a breather box, these engines do have blow-by, especially when they're oversized and at, at higher RPM. So you got to let that crankcase breathe. I know this kind of sits up above the frame, and I looked around here, and I understand why he did this, because even though it looks like you could just put it any place, you need something to attach it to, and the way this is designed... I uh, I tried and tried. This has got a bar going 
welded so I couldn't go clear around it. I suppose I could have. But again, it's right in front of the fan and if any drops of oil, it might get sucked right in there. So that wasn't a good thing. And you want gravity to work with you so that it can flow back and that the, the blow-by can go up and out. And this is the same type of a cotton filter as the rest of these. I don't know if you can see up in there, but it, uh, I just happened to have this in my stock from, I was going to use it to mount an oil filter, uh, I never did use it, so I went ahead and just put it on the frame now, I'm not sure, I'd like to get it underneath for sake of a rollover situation, and I really don't like this oil cooler and fan, number one, if you've got, if you're moving like we just were, you don't need a fan. Uh, it's got a thermostat. I thought I'd leave it set up. Uh, there has been some oil going through it. It does feel a little bit warm to the touch. That's all you need. But I'm going to leave it there with the fan just like he's got it. It. He. Why wouldn't you put it on the bottom? Who cares if it obstructs your view with the mirror? You got two mirrors. Uh, I just don't understand why people do this type of thing. Mount lights on the top. Not Now... <laughs> I'm not going to say, not saying that we're going to roll it. I hopefully I'm not going to be driving that stupid that I get in that situation. But accidents are called accidents because you don't expect them to happen, and so you want minimal damage. Uh, I have some wrist restraints that came with this, and I think I'm going to move these lights down here where the mirror is, and I'm going to put a bigger truck mirror so I can use the camera and uh, get a better field of view, even though there's some obstructions here. I may take the fan off and move the cooler on the underside of this and leave it in the same spot. There's so many brackets and gussets, you know. I was going to lower the... Uh, the gas tank just a little bit so that I could utilize this front shock hole if needed. Uh, of course the farther back you have your shocks the more leverage that you get. And you'll look the shock mount looks pretty much like it did before right? That's because it is the same as it was before. I did not weld it to the spring plates. What I did is I cut off the spring plate and I just uh, bolted it to the back of the new spring plate so I just there's a lot of surface area there for contact these are half inch grade 8 bolts so the old shock mount is just bolted to the new spring plate and the spring wake is un, uh, has not been welded or messed with so yeah I like the way it felt uh, I like the way it rode and even with holding the camera and the tires sit a little flatter I like that I think this is gonna work out for me it might be a little soft for the dunes and uh, I might uh, experiment with taking uh, these forward shocks completely off and just running the back ones in the dirt although once we got to moving in second gear there it felt it felt a lot better it felt pretty good and uh, it's early morning construction workers were working over here yesterday afternoon I decided not to come in here but uh, I think uh, yeah I feel pretty good about things uh, I had to replace one of the boots I also was gonna take that test ride and one of the axle boots here had a big hole in it uh, a big tear and luckily I spotted it just in time because I've been keeping an eye on it it felt okay uh, but I put a new one in and I'm going to carry a spare and I think the one on the other side for whatever reason is in in better physical condition. I might change that out just for the heck of it. Now when you're changing those out sometimes it wouldn't hurt to put a floor jack underneath the spring plate put your chain around and then jack it up so that your axle is level. If you have if you try to put those boots on when the um, axle is in the downward position much more than this you have trouble with the frame horn I like to face my bolts towards the back of the car uh, for flexing reasons and you don't want to don't over tighten this outside axle clamp here do not over tie it 
let this thing find its happy spot. Leave it loose, even if it leaks a little bit of oil, and then just snug it down. You don't want to over tighten all these little screws. The last guy had silicone in there. This guy loves silicone. He put silicone everywhere. That must have been his miracle thing. You can see where I overflowed the transmission. I was adding a little bit after that uh, incident with the axle boots because there was a bunch of oil that came out. So, uh, yeah. Again, this is not a full flow oil system, but in Jeff Hibbard's book, he said that this is the most common and it keeps this bottom side clear from any hoses, fittings, things that could break or get knocked off. And I don't plan on doing that type of riding. Uh, this is what I like. Finding areas with uh, hard pack road and maybe some ruts and washes and some hills. I'm gonna play with it for a little bit more. I'm really happy with it. Thanks for subbing. Easy, cheesy, out.